such a strong sense of place. What city is this? Or city is this a city in the world? you crazy that Um... I grew up, you know, it, it's not in any specific city. I feel like it's kind of a Simpsons thing in that way. We were like, oh, is it? But, like, where I grew up was a place called Tantrum, California. And, uh, and it was like, it was kind of like that. Like, it's very flat. And, you know, there's not a ton to do. So we'd always, like, be trying to find ways to entertain ourselves. And, yeah, I think a lot of it comes from that, the way that it looks a little bit. Cool. I guess I tell it, you can tell it somewhere. It's actually one of all the other things that I think about that actually sounds like people who work in public government. Well, like that's like their job. Right, right. Yeah, it's kind of a... Like, originally when I pitched the show, I was trying to get it to be about these two guys, Mordecai and Rigby, who worked at a zoo that took care of humans. And they were like, no. And I, actually, a lot of people were like into it, but like yeah. one of the top executives was like, no way. And I was like... But then I thought about it and I was like, yeah, that'd be kind of weird. Like, what are they going to do every episode? Take care of, like, the fireman and then take care... It would have felt, like, really young. Whereas, like, making it just about a general, like, park setting where it's like, they work at a park, like, as park groundskeepers, like... And it's not really about their job. It's about how they go to their job. So it's kind of nice to have something really simple that people get what they do, but you don't see them do it. I have a question. Um, I have no strength for this kind of writing style, but how do you feel about some of the most suggestive content you've seen? Subversive stuff. I, I feel something. very good about it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, I really wanted to make something that, like, I would like. Like, I don't know how I would, like, make it and be like, oh, I think that's going to really play for kids, because it's just like, if we're making ourselves laugh in the writer's room, and then that's what we put in, and so... A lot of times, the stuff that comes out really funny is like, we know this is technically for kids, but the fact that we can make something that's like kind of hidden for the adults, where it's like they're going to get it, the kid's going to be like, hey, why are you laughing? Because I can remember watching Simpsons growing up, and my parents would be laughing, and I'd be like, why is that funny? So it's just like cool, because you come back later when you're older, and then all of a sudden it's funnier for a different reason. I thought that was really cool. Uh, the show is also very kind of um, I think if John Kay who really written stuff and has gotten a firm and that and like, you know, let the animation speak for itself and then like, should come here. Like, how do you feel about the strength being very dialogue? I feel like story, like for me, I come from the opposite side of it where it's like stories that most important things to me for character. And if you don't care about the characters and if there's not like an emotional heart to the story, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Like people love South Park, people love like all the different things that look different. It always comes back to like a really like cool character that you like. And so story to me is like central to like a lot of people liking it. Because it's like if it looked really cool and the story is the game, you would change the channel so fast. You'd be like, eh, there's even with the original like uh, Simpsons shorts on the Tracy Ullman show, like the, those those characters were just basically like something to hang the dialogue on. And the dialogue was hilarious and that's really the show went for everything. The characters are like really like they're not flat. I just kind of bring that up. You actually like want to know more about like the relations and things like that with the show. Did you guys um, really expect to have um, an older audience when you guys were doing the show? I knew um, the Cartoon Institute uh, at Cartoon Network sprang up and they wanted to start trying to skew older. Um, they didn't want to do Adult Swim, but they wanted like something in between what they were doing and what they had. You know, they wanted something a little bit bigger, and that was really appealing to me. I was like, oh, it's perfect, because I've been working on, like, I worked on Camp Lazlo and then Flapjack, and they were fun, but, like, there were limitations to what we could write, because it was like, well, these are for kids, like, you can't really do that, and it was like a TVY7 rating, but once we got the TVPG rating, which is like, because that's what they said, it would be TVPG, and that's like, a lot of stuff on TV, like, live action, everything, I was like, we could do all this stuff, that's awesome. So, trying to come up with something that played a little bit older, with like, more regular voices, it sounded like adults, like, not kids, you know what I mean? Like, that's what we were really trying to make, something different. Um, I guess, segue to that, um, if you guys kind of like hinge upon having an older audience. Um, we work for a video game blog. Um, what kind of, if you were to think of something off the top of your head, what kind of style or um, category would you like to make a video game? Like? 
adventure style, or would it be, you know, Simpsons I, is very adventure. Yeah, I really liked um, Toe Jam and Earl growing up. I feel like that would be the perfect platform for Mordecai and Rigby. And, like, one thing that I really liked about it was, like, so it's like an over-the-top thing, so you're, like, watching your character move around, and they do have a job, but they don't have to do it. Like, <laughs> the game is fun, even if you're just walking around, like, running into random people, which there's plenty of characters for that to work. And then um, I also liked how it was a two-player game, so you're playing with your friend, but you didn't have to be on the same screen. You could leave, and then it would be split screen, and you'd be playing with, like, different areas. That was so rad. So, like, I think that would be really fun. It's, it's really great that it worked back, and then they made a sequel, and it was, like, a platform. Yeah, it did make sense. <laughs> It was not as long of a game, but once you're going to So it's a uh, pixel lightest. Oh. Um, we're an up and coming. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We've got a lot of cop the Capcom stuff on there right now. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys feel like you're ushering in kind of a new generation of animation that kind of lies between Adult Swim and Cartoon Network stuff? I think that I think that if people end up liking it, like they might want to try to make something like that because I think. When you see what's possible and you're trying to pitch shows, you're always going to try to make what you think the industry wants. Or I think that's what a lot of people do. And now that they've seen that it is possible to make something that is like that, maybe that'll open them up to like, oh, I, I would like to make a show and I'm going to do it. It just uh, depends on what people are into. As long as they're making what like they're going to have fun making, it will be good. As a creator... Did you, was there like a specific epiphany moment? Like, were you just like, I'm going to make a show like this and it's going to be awesome? Or was it like, was it, you know, a long process? Or did you try a lot of things? Or? Uh, there was, well, I had, um, for my shorts, the way I would come up with stuff at school, that like Sam voiced all those characters, and they're, they're characters that are in the show now. Um, we would do this game where we'd throw titles into a hat and we'd draw them out at midnight. It was like a warm-up for our film to CalArts. And you'd read the word, and everybody would hear the word. So for the first one, the word was lollipops. And it was like, I told us to make a film in two days. And we're like, oh, God. And so we'd go back and like start like thinking, and you're like, oh, I only have two days. It's already midnight, and I'm tired. And you're trying to come up with an idea, and then like something would hit, and like the nightmare would be and like pops sprang out of that, and put the voice to it, and then it like existed. And so it was like, okay, there's one. And then the next year, like was the, the word was candy, and like it ended up being about two guys in a like gas station giving each other candy. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and then they, they turned into character designs that ended up being in the show. And so then those three characters existed and I really liked them. I was like, I don't I want I kinda want to use them. So I put them together, but the balance wasn't quite right because Mordecai and Rigby, like at the time Mordecai and Vincent by themselves wouldn't really work. Because I was seeing them as two like co workers. And, but he was like the mad one, so I was like, I need another like, Mordecai type character. And that's where like Rigby came in, who had been like a sketch on a post it on my computer that I randomly drew of like a raccoon hula hooping. I was like, oh, that looks cool, I could use him sometime. And so like I put them together, and then Vincent became the boss that you yell at them if you got pissed off. So now they have like conflict, and then Pops is the guy who doesn't care, so he's like a little bit of comedy relief. And then Skips was like the uber like know it all, like he's done everything, he's all sage. And, and then I came up with a story that worked for that when Mordecai Rigby just wanted this chair. And it was like super simple, just play rock, paper, scissors for a chair, and, and it existed. So the pilot was the first thing you wrote? For that. And that was written on a very hot day, I didn't have air conditioning. It's just like boarding. <laughs> put the fan on me in my underwear. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was good. I might have my back show. Was the original pilot for uh, Craig McCracken? The Cartoon Institute, yes. And so that was a seven minute short that they asked. They said, we're looking for older content for the Cartoon Institute. And so I gathered up those characters and tried to come up with like a simple story that I could showcase them in. And pitched it, and they liked it, and then we got to make more. Cartoon show with people who are obviously not working and not being in college. It's this reflection of the current economic times. <laughs> They're 23. Oh, they are? Yeah, they are. But, um, yeah, I really wanted like to make it where like, they're two like, dudes who may or may have not gone to college, and they're working a minimum wage job. But like, I feel like so many people have done that. Like I worked a lot of minimum wage jobs growing up, and 
I totally know what it's like to, to work those jobs. So I felt like it was something that was really relatable because everybody has to start somewhere. Like they can't just get an awesome job without like getting some experience and learning how to deal with it. I feel like Mordecai and Ricky are still trying to work all that stuff out. That's what I have. This still a good gas station. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Aww. Do you guys like leave the character in the studio most of the time? Or are you doing the voices and all that? Or do you like kind of go around with those voices? Like, Mine is just like my regular speaking voice, so like I can't help it. But like I know that they, I'm sure you guys have had moments where like people find out they hear the voice and then yeah. they start playing. Like, do it, do the voice, do the voice. Leaving voicemails for people. Oh yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> that's a big one. Have to take them. Next day. Next day.